Hi, it's Megan McKeefree with the Alliance for American Manufacturing. This afternoon I'm in Canton, North Carolina. I'm over at CarQuest Auto Parts speaking with President Steve Nanny. Hi Steve. Hey there. How are you today? Pretty well. Good. Um, could you tell me how long you've lived in this community for? Uh, I've lived here, I was born in 1974 and have been here all my life. Uh, our business is a family run business. Um, Dad started it in the late 50s. Uh, he began uh, working for a, a corporate store and then he actually bought the store from them uh, in the late 60s and, and we moved to our current location in the 70s and we have been here ever since. Wow, that's great. So how long have you personally worked at this location? I've been here since 1992. Wow, it's quite a long time. It's, it's great to see family businesses in a, a close-knit community like this. Yeah. Um, could you tell me um, what you've seen over the years of, of growing up here and living here as far as uh, the change in manufacturing the community or the change uh, with the paper mill being right across the street? Uh, the paper mill is a huge part of our business. Um, we supply them uh, with the tools they need for the, the various vehicles they have, the, the parts for those vehicles, uh, to be serviced and maintained properly. Um, we also supply them with uh, hydraulic hoses, fittings for some of the hydraulic systems, uh, and, and a lot of filters for some of the big equipment that they have, and they make up a huge part of our business consistently since 1992, since I've been here, uh, and especially I've seen it more in the past few years going into more of a managerial mm -hmm. position at the store here, that they are at least 10% of our business uh, every month. They're, they're always our, consistently our number one account. Uh, so, so we really try very hard to service them as best as we can mm -hmm. uh, to take care of them and help keep things running smoothly for them, uh, which in turn helps keep things running smoothly for us. Mm -hmm. So you guys go hand in hand and uh, not only do you supply the mill um, with all the parts, but when we talk about over a thousand employees at that mill, mm -hmm. I'm sure they come in when they're off of work for their own family needs. A absolutely. the. Uh, I would say that a safe guess would be probably 40% of the people that come through the front door of our establishment here are directly tied to the paper mill. Mm -hmm. um, given the, the state of our, our market right now and our downturn economy, um, we've seen job loss throughout the country. If there happened to be some job loss in this area, specifically with the paper industry, uh, job cuts, or even uh, worst case scenario, a mill closure, mm -hmm. what would be the results uh, in your business here? Uh, it would be detrimental. I mean, any time you take 10% of your entire income revenue, and, that, and that's just from one account, and then you factor in that possibly up to 40% of the people that come through your doors depend on the, the mill for a paycheck uh, to support their families, uh, th then maybe detrimental wouldn't be a good word maybe catastrophic would be a, a better word. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and not only us, but several other businesses in the, in the area would feel a huge impact and it would make it, we would greatly have to alter the way that we do business in order to survive if we could even do that. Uh, I think it would be huge mm -hmm. uh, if something like that was to happen. And over the years when there's hiring going on, we can see spots in business when, when they hire new people. Uh, lots of people that we deal with used, that work there now used to work in Asheville, uh, which is probably a t town 25 miles away, that doing manufacturing jobs and, and plant work. Uh, a lot of them came here from that uh, to be closer to home and in the community. And if that was to happen and if there was a closure or a series of layoffs, uh, those people would be going right back to Asheville to look for work and I'd say quite a few would be moving that direction and, and we would see that much more revenue from our business going out the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I remember you saying that you had some friends that worked there. Yes. And you think that for the most part that's the biggest employer in the community and most people would have to relocate? Uh, a lot of them would. A lot mm -hmm. of them would. Uh, they're, uh, uh, it's so uh, it's so nice to have such a large employer here locally. Uh, 
of that. It, it really spoils you. And, and when, when you think about the uh, the alternative, uh, it's not too pleasant. Mm -hmm. It's great to come into a community like this uh, as a visitor and see the pride that people have in talking about the mill and the relationship the mill has with the community. And it's just so refreshing to see that. And I certainly, you know, hope that this never comes down to this. Um, but it's it's very important to find out what kind of damages would happen right. to a close knit community like this and right. the services that um, are provided in the community. So um, I just wanted to ask you a last question: If you had the power to speak to those in charge of making the decision, uh, is there anything you'd like them to consider? Um, several things. I, mainly, though, is to listen, I, I believe that the small communities such as Canton, North Carolina, it is really the heartbeat of this nation, and, and it was small communities like this that, that this nation was founded on. And uh, we've grown uh, together, and, and more and more things are being outsourced and, and shipped overseas and, and imported. Uh, around here, people take a lot of pride in buying local uh, and I, I think that that's a lesson that could be learned all over the United States really. Mm -hmm. well, great, I really want to thank you for your, taking your time out of your busy day today. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.